Hey what's up guys, Alex here, thank you for checking this video and welcome to the 11th part of the series of tutorial WordPress 1.1 for beginner developers. Welcome again, in this lesson we are going to talk about one important file that is currently missing from our awesome team. So if we take a look of the current status of our team, uh, you will notice that we have a little bit of style here and a nice uh, built grid for our blog post in the blog page. If you're missing this part, I suggest you to check the live development session number two that I did uh, a couple of weeks ago or a week ago and you can find all the process that I used to create this grid and to use the slider uh, to create this slider in the home page is the built-in slider of Bootstrap and also the grid is a pre-made grid of Bootstrap so it's really simple and I didn't actually do much of PHP it was mostly CSS and HTML styling so I suggest you to take a look so right now in our blog page we have this structure with our uh, latest blog posts insert in our CMS. If we click whatever blog, if we actually click on the title of the blog to go inside and check the content of the blog, we're going to see that we are not seeing the content. We cannot access the actual content, so there's no body structure, they're not actually like typing the content of the post. What is happening is because we are missing the file that we need, WordPress cannot visualize the actual content of the blog post, but he WordPress grabs by default the latest content type that we're using in our index.php loop. So what we have to do is we have to create a really important file called single.php. The single.php file is the default file that WordPress search and uses to print the information of a single blog post. So every time we click on the title of a blog post or the usual button read more at the end of an excerpt or the end of a small amount of text of a blog post, WordPress grabs that single.php file and uses that structure to print all the information of our blog post. We have to treat this file as it was a page, an independent page, so we have to include all the header and footer tag and we have to re-include the entire HTML markup to create a proper structure for our single blog post page. So right now, because I want, I don't want to rewrite, rewrite it from scratch, I want to grab the markup of a page that I already have. So I copy, paste, and I change a little bit the structure. Now I am inside the single blog post, so I want to print things differently to just visualize better the content of my blog post. So let's remove this markup and that's it. This is the structure that I want to use to visualize in a better way my single.php file, so my uh, single blog post inside when I access the blog post. So I have, usually I have always my loop to access the post function to call all the post class ID title and whatever always use the loop we have to use the while loop because we have to check if we have a post even if the single.php file prints usually just one single blog post for how WordPress is made how WordPress is built the logic of WordPress we have to use the post loop Inside the post loop, we can print our article tags and we can put inside all the content that we need. So we have the title, we have the post thumbnail. I align the post thumbnail to the right with a float uh, attribute in the CSS. I'm printing the category and I'm printing the content of my blog post. Let's save it and reload our single blog post. And as you can see, we have all the information that we decided to print in our single.php file. So we have the title, we have the featured image aligned to the right with a float right 
CSS attribute and my actual content. And if you notice, if we go in the home page or we go in the blog, all the structure of our previous content type, so our previous content files, hasn't changed. So this single.php file doesn't affect at all all the other files and all the other structure. This single.php file gets called just when we access the actual single blog post. And uh, this is really great, this is really useful because we can have different structure for different blog posts. Also, a really important thing, the single.php file works exactly like the content file. So we can create a specific file for specific post type. So we can have a single dash aside.php or a single dash futured single dash image.php. We can change the structure of a single blog post based on its content type in the same way we did inside the post loop for different post types. Let's keep going and extend the functionality, uh, the functionalities of our single.php file. Uh, normally in um, WordPress, in a like generic WordPress site, in a generic blog, the page, the blog page, the actual single blog page has all other kind of information. So right now we're printing just the category here, but we can print a tag. We can print an edit link that can be visible only if the user is logged with an administration level. And we can visualize also the comment section. So the comment box that allows users to leave a comment. Uh, to do that, we can simply use some built-in functionalities of WordPress and it's really simple to use, it's really straightforward. So let's keep going. I want in my small tag here, I want to separate with just this two, oops, not this two, with just this two tag, and I want to use another function of WordPress called the tags and this function is gonna call all the tags that we input inside our WordPress installation so the category I'm gonna change it with uh, an empty string because I don't want the category to be print as a list I want just an inline list of words and links so if I re reload, you notice my tag are not in a separated line because this is not a list anymore. All the other categories are gonna be listed side by side of my links. So here we don't have any tag even if you use the function d tags, just simply because we didn't input any tags inside this blog post. Uh, before entering the actual CMS to fix this problem. Let's keep going and add another functions to this uh, section. So let's turn another tag just to separate and let's open again our PHP tag, maybe in a better way. And let's call the function edit underscore post link. Also here we can specify a lot of different attributes, but for now we're gonna leave it alone without any attributes and we close it. We go in, we go in our front run, we reload, and you notice also here, this link, the actual edit link that should appear it is missing. Why is that? Simply because we're not logged inside our CMS, inside our administration panel. So by default, WordPress is not gonna show any admin related links or admin related functions or actions if you're not actually logged with a specific user role. So let's log in inside our administration panel and let's take a look if it actually works. Now I'm logged. Let's open another tab. Let's access my blog post. 
and see now I have the link called edit this if I click on this link and I open it in another tab I go straight inside the blog post the edit blog post but I can see this link just because I'm currently logged as an administrator inside this inside the CMS of WordPress before I couldn't see it because I wasn't logging so it's is really good as a built-in functionality. We can extend it, you can change the markup, but it's a more advanced thing, so it's not part of this series that is for beginners. So for now, we're gonna stick with the default edit this <laughs> link name, but it's, it's good, it works. So uh, just because we're already inside the pancake recipe blog post, we can insert some tags. So let's insert pancakes. Oops. Pancakes. Uh, type. How to guide kitchen. So we have these tags. We update our blog post. We reload the post outside, and we see now we have our beautiful list of tags. So now we have the category the actual tags and the link that can be visible only if we are locked inside. Now what we're missing is the comment section and the comment section is uh, it's really good. WordPress has a really nice built-in functionality because can give us the ability to visualize, to show the comment um, template, the comment part, only if the comment option of the specific blog post is activated. So if we open our screen option here, you will notice that there's this checkbox that is unchecked called discussion. If we check it and we scroll down our page, you will notice this new attribute section, this new panel called, uh, of course, discussion because we <laughs> just activated the section that gives us the ability to manually activate or deactivate if we want to allow comments and track back or ping backs to this specific blog post. If we leave this checked and we have a comment template included, we're going to see the comment section. So the actual form to leave a comment or whatever. If we uncheck this, we can select an if statement and hide the comment section to prevent users to comment a specific blog post that doesn't allow comments. So by default, our settings in our settings administration panel allows every blog post, every users to leave a comment. But if we don't want, if we want to specify just another thing. So let's say I want to divide with an HR tag and let's open our PHP tag and use a simple if statement if comments underscore open this is a boolean function a boolean function is a function that returns only through or false so if the comments are open i'm gonna have a true statement here and if this if statement is through i can print whatever I want inside here. So I can print the actual comments template. And the comments template is a built-in functionality of WordPress that calls the actual template of the comments that has, is a built-in, is a pre-built PHP file with all the tags that WordPress uses to uh, properly create a common form and connect that common form to the WordPress administration panel to save all the comments and to save it safely without brutal, <laughs> without weird injection of code from users or probably hackers. So we have the ability to change this PHP file, we can use our custom common template, but for now we're not going to use it. Also, this part is a more advanced part. And if you don't know how to properly build a, uh, an input field that saves some data into the database, you shouldn't do it. It's really easy to destroy a database with 
with a wrong input with a drop table or wherever SQL injection. So be careful and if you can stick with the default pre-built functionality of WordPress, it's way safer and you will be kind of like 99% 99 sure that everything's gonna work properly and you're not gonna have bad surprises. So let's save it. Let's reopen our front end. Let's go in the blog post, reload, and we see we have this super ugly, horrible uh, pre-built comment section of WordPress that it's, it's pretty ugly. If I open uh, this blog post in another browser where I'm not logged as an administrator or as a user, you will see we have all the field, all the pre-made field that WordPress includes. So the name, email, website, and the actual content of the comment to leave your text wherever. So to test this if statement that we created, we can uh, check, we can actually uncheck the allow comments in the discussion panel of our blog post. Update it and reload. And you can see here, there's no anymore our comment template. To maybe create a better experience for the user instead of not printing absolutely anything, we could use an else statement to better organize and better give a user some feedback to uh, let him know what is going on here, why he cannot leave a comment. So we can use an else and we can simply echo maybe an h5 tag with a class I cannot write today of text center h5 and we can write sorry comments are closed save it refresh and we can see here we have our text that says the user sorry comments are closed instead of not printing anything. It's a better user experience and it's better for the user that knows what's going on, why he cannot leave the comment. And of course, if we simply reactivate a lot of comments here and we update our blog post, we can see that our comment section is visible again. And also for today's lesson, it's uh, pretty much everything. Now we know how to handle the single blog post file and how to properly print the information inside our pages, inside our blog loop, and inside our single blog post. How to activate the tags, how to activate the edit button that is really useful when you have a lot of blog posts and it's hard to search those blog posts inside the administration panel. You can just simply access the admin section of the single blog post from the front end. This is really useful. So thank you again for checking this video. And if you enjoyed, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. And I hope to see you or hear you or read some comments <laughs> from you guys. And other than that, see you next time.